August 17th, 23. Please add yourself as an attendee in the document. Okay, for today, um, let's do a quick catch up on our post view one tracking. So well, I think you added this, so let's see here. All right, first point. So PR for script around graphing. I think is Luba working on, oh no, you're working on this, okay. And this is the one Luba's working on. Yeah. Yeah, Leigh, you wanna go ahead and talk about this? Uh... Yeah, sure. So this is the post submit job that we have been talking about in last couple of meetings. Um, this post submit job basically takes the data we have in the uh, CI performance benchmark repository and plots the graph for it. The reason why it has to be a separate job is because the um, other periodic job only has like a week of, week of data. So after it publishes that week's data, the every week's data is present in the CI performance repository. And that's where we need this uh, post-submit job. So basically this is to isolate the timeline of when the data is collected and how far back it is plotted. Okay. Yeah. And we need to get to this first. We need, yeah, okay. Yeah, and I have tried this out. So I used this script today to upload fresh data from last four or five weeks. Um, okay. If you go, yeah. The, actually the one uh the links above the one you click yeah oh okay the charts ah uh -huh, okay yeah so from now on once those two pr merges we will we will be able to review this graph in automated way so Great. basically it won't have to do any work for the charts to show up. Okay, that's great. Okay. Yeah. yeah um, we haven't looked at these in a little while. I think I was just gonna scroll through them and see if there was anything strange. So I think these are the strange ones. Uh, if you scroll a little bit up. So we, we reviewed this in June, July last time when mm -hmm. we saw the uh, patch counts uh, go down a little bit, but they have uh, come back to normal now, the patch VMI account. Uh, and if you scroll up, there is one more chart like this. This yeah. one? Yeah, the get endpoints. Okay. And then there was this one, I think we talked about this one already, right? This is we talked about before V1, this was the, we added a patch probably from the finalizer, if I remember correctly. Correct, yes. Yeah. Well, nothing on the ordinary. This was June, and that, this is the same thing. Like we're, you know, the same drop, similar drop. Okay, but then nothing else looks, nothing else looks interesting. Okay. Cool, yeah, we already talked about this one. Okay, cool. Yeah, that looks good. That's awesome, I'm glad to see this. Um, we're good. Let's see, we're close on this one. Uh, these ones too. Yep, we at that one. Okay, cool. Pretty steady, looks like. All right, this is awesome. It's going to set us up a lot because now when we get to, once we get this stuff automated, we can start building some more of these tests and you know, a few of these places like the density cluster and see how we can mess the, with the results a little bit. Cool. Uh, so actually, the density cluster one, it has uh, some, well, not anomalies, but it looks like for a lot of early July, the density cluster jobs were broken. Yeah. And... I know. I think like we need, yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, this data, like for, yeah, I mean, let's say this is kind of one of the ones where like after the new year, I wanted to see where it goes because we just, we, we basically, I think this was the rebuild, like somewhere in here, Brian did the rebuild to upgrade 
Kubernetes to a new version and it was completely offline during this time? No, not that, right? Recent ones. So July, 2023, three. Yeah. It's yeah. a um, little bit, right? Yeah, from July three onwards, we saw okay. no job reports until July 15th or something. Yeah. Oh, you're saying like, you're saying this data, like it was, we weren't getting any and now we are seeing a bunch of stuff. Yeah, so after, so if you can zoom into yeah. that part. Yeah. So July 3rd, yeah, yeah, is when we started, when we saw the last data and then it all the way to July 24th, there's nothing. Okay. Yeah, so something happened in in between those that the jobs were not reporting data. Yeah, I think I okay. I mean I we need to I mean I the, the density cluster needs some more love. Like it just we haven't we've been focused on other things. So I mean, as far as like I'm concerned, like what I was saying with this data and like these holes here, like this holes hole here, and you know the one back in July, like we we, we it's totally different than what we have for the periodic, where you can clearly see trends. This one, it's like I we're not getting a good trend line here. This is so I that's where that's what I mean. It's like I, I'm kind of thinking about it, it's like we at some point we need to look at this as like from January forward or whatever because I. I don't know how to read this data. This is too random. Yeah, makes sense. So I, we probably need to spend some time in the in the future when we have all the stuff automated to do some work on the dedicated job. See if we can get some more. Get some get a trend lined out of this. Okay, cool. All right, that's awesome, Lee. So script is looking good. It's working. And um, okay, so you just need some reviews on this one, and then and then we should get that in, and then we can. Looks like we can then just wire it up to this and um okay so that covers those it's just those two PRs, right? I think two nine three two nine three one, yeah. Okay, and then that gives us what we need for um for the job. So then what's this one? Let's go to the last one here. So this is a PR that um that came to my attention while the API review work. Um mm -hmm. and so basically this PR proposes that we introduce a shadow node, a new CRD, where um, we will basically write everything to that shadow node and um, the actual node will only have read-only access. So that prevents um, uh, security, that addresses some security concerns. Um, by introducing uh, a new CRD. The reason why I have it in this call is because I feel like this will introduce a lot of new performance related, um, you know, not problems, but uh, sort of things we need to be cautious about. And I would, uh, I don't know, it feels like this needs a little bit more of our design and, and discussion. Um, so I was wondering, okay, is this a good, uh, you know, a, item to discuss here? Yeah, I think so. Um, I mean, really, what, what, it would be good if Lubo can put together um, something in the community for this one. I, I, I read this one too, and, uh, I mean, I was not thinking about it in terms of scale, but I mean, I just don't understand the, um, like I, it, it just made me think of like, we're rewriting the RBAC, the RBAC guy, but or we're just like working around it. And I don't know, I, I would be really nice if we can get some design, but from him, but I mean, so like in terms of, so just strictly talking scale, like what do you think needs to be, looked at yeah. or addressed so for scale here's what i'm thinking right our uh list calls will be doubled because we have to watch well we have to watch the 
uh, the node objects because they are read only. And in, in order to shadow it, we will also have to watch the um, shadow node, right? So our list calls will be, um, sorry, list watch, I call them together. They'll be doubled. Um, the writes that the system makes. So any write that is made to the node API will also have to be followed through on the shadow node API in order for them to be consistent. So even the writes and updates will, uh, I don't know if it, they will be doubled, but definitely uh, we'll have more load uh, on the updates. So, um, these both will affect scalability in large scale clusters. And that's why I wanted to have some kind of design um, and brainstorming. Um, like what will we do to validate performance and scalability issues once this work is taken on? Mm -hmm. Agreed. I think we need to design. I mean, this is just another reason why I think we do. Yeah. Um, I will reach out to Lubo on this PR and, you know, have some discussion going and it'll tag you as well. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I would, I think that, yeah, sure. I, I think we, I think really, I don't know what Roman has said, but I, I think this would be, I think we would need to take some time to do some design on this. I mean, this has been a few weeks. He hasn't responded to anything. He's quite busy with some, some other things, but um, yeah, let's um, let's try and push him in that direction because I, I don't know. I think this needs a little bit more thought. I agree with what you're what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, and even for um, yeah, I mean, even for the API side of things, I don't I don't know. I want to maintain a shadow node API. So, okay, yeah, please post on it. Let's get, let's try and get to a design document somewhere and see where this goes. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Uh, let me open this up. What else did we have in here? So you've got, um, so the API reviewers, okay. Uh, Cover that at the time. So deprecation policy. Uh, okay, here's our six scale plus B, plus B one. Okay, so in this stuff, so we've got automation, which is what you're covering um, with those changes. Um, yeah, I think that one needs um, attention next. Okay, I have a chance to look at this. Okay. Oh, this is the issue. Okay, I thought this was a pull request. Okay. I, I need to uh, add a section to the doc for tooling. Um, that's something I'll pick up next once the post submit job is um, March. Cool. Okay. Um, all right. We got to plan them. I can take a look at this after the call. This PR and this one. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Let's see. Any other topics? Anything else to discuss? Otherwise, we'll end early. Um, so, some updates regarding the um, simulation. Mm -hmm. uh, so, last time I demoed, well, last time I talked about a controller to add watch requests. That okay. work is going on and um, right now with that POC, we can see that, let's say if you add 400 nodes, it will create 400 into 20, which is around 800, well, more, 8,000 uh, watch requests. And with that, the API server memory increases around one, 1 1.5 gigabytes. Um, just Wait, why, why does it do 20 to one? This is this is this is what you're observing Kubernetes does. It's twenty to one when you create a node. In our downstream data centers, yes. Uh, so not only does not only is the kubelet uh, load included on that, 
but all the other uh, daemon set controllers that run uh, on the on the kubelet, they also cause a watch loads. This is so, creating a node, you said? Creating a node. So yeah. for example, when you start a kubelet, yeah, creating a fake node. Okay. And this is a 20x multiplier on API calls. Watch on lists or watch oh. requests? Watch list, yeah. 20 to 1. Yeah. So now the question is what resources? are used for that list watch, right? So it depends on different things. Uh, Kubelet uses nodes, pods, uh, PVCs, PV, secrets, and other two things, um, CSI. Related. And so when, in this, I'm still on this top, sorry, I'm like, that does, when, I'm assuming the, so we, so this is our downstream. Maybe this is where you're going. So like you're, you're trying to identify all the places that are that are where this 20 is coming from. Is that what you're listing out? No, I already have identified that. That's oh, you already have them. Okay. Yeah, I I just added them up so it's concise. But uh, let me. Oh, so you you yeah okay. So how did you how did you get the 20 then? So you you went and located you went and located all of them. Yes, so what I did was I have an Excel sheet, which looks, which is coming from audit logs. And- So how many of these are upstream components of the 20 and how many are not? I need to um, classify them. For now, I have not classified them as upstream and downstream com components. They are just classified as what resource those requests are going to. Okay. That'd be interesting. I mean, because we should, this is one of the things, like when we look at, um, this is one of, was one of our problems when estimating scale is that, is that we need to, so like it was two things, is that one is we need to know the weight or the cost of a list watch request. Whatever that is, we can classify it in memory, CPU, whatever it is, um, or some other unit that we make up. And then the other one was, how many of these things get created when when something happens in the cluster? So it looks like you've already got, it sounds like you've got pretty close to both for just like create node, which is really interesting because that would be so, that would be really interesting uh, topic to talk about, especially in the Kubernetes six scale, because I wonder if they have this level of granularity or visibility in some of their and some of their metrics. Yeah. Because I'm when I talked to Wojtek previously, it was that there were some estimates about this stuff. And I, if we're able to get exact measurements, that would be tremendous because not only does it mean that we can do we can we can extrapolate with it, but it also means that we can probably do some heuristics with it. Yep. So I think okay, cool. the, the data coming from it is not uh is not using the tools that we have discussed here. It's using the audit logs and it's very manual. I had to go through all the requests and you know spend some okay. time uh, summarize. Those. So talk to me about then the problem. Okay, so then what are the, so the problems you're, so what, the way you're dealing with this is you are, you're scraping logs to then find the list requests, who's making the list requests. No, and so, counting them is that what you're doing? No, actually, so when I mean audit logs, um, they are shipped to uh, Kibana, right? So mm -hmm. I'm making a table in Kibana which gives me the um, API resource on the um, rows and the number of calls uh, on the columns. So, and this is filtered by watch calls, right? So, so then I have 
all the API resources and I have all the watch calls made um, by different components aggregated into that table. And then I am simplifying it to just one call. So I assume that multi, so this is filtered by again, one node and one node is making multiple uh, calls, but in our simulation, I will just use one instead of many, right? When, when creating, because those watches can terminate and they can be restarted and then something. And I, I don't want to account for that. So the very base case is at least one call made um, during the creation. So that's how I got to this list. Okay. I think, so I think the next step would be to, um, you know, let's try and classify them because it would be interesting to know what what the, this number is from upstream components that you get out of the box when you install Kubernetes. So I, what would be the advantage of doing that? Um, it, from my understanding, those are the calls which are essential for working of those controllers. So we might not be able to reduce those calls. No, we wouldn't. Well, I, I don't think so. But the um, the point is, so it's two things is that which of them aren't. So maybe we can reduce those. And which of them aren't upstream, part of upstream components. And, and those maybe we might be able to remove those or whatever we want to do with them. And then the ones that are, then the value is, is that we know they need them, right? So that mm -hmm. this is this is what's going to this is what's going to add to our this is what's going to add up to our number, right? Like where whenever we do something with a node, this is the cost of it. And, and so the idea was that okay, if if creating a node costs something costs I don't know we'll do a numerical value. It won't even do like a, a CPU value or anything. Costs five list watches. You know maybe that's the metric. How much does updating a node cost? Maybe it costs 10 list watches, maybe it costs none, whatever it is. Like, what is the, how do these things, what's the cost of some of these things? That's what I'm wondering because when you start to look at the, what comes out of the box and you separate the two, now we can see, we can make assumptions about what the, the upstream infra is doing. And, and then we can start to, extrapolate what are the really costly operations which we kind of already know but it's now we can put a number to it it's not just like oh we know list watch is costly or we know create a note is costly we know exactly how much it costs okay makes sense yeah so i i think we are on track for doing that it, not upstream versus downstream that's a good data point i'll add that but um, in terms of costs, right? So um, what I did was because we have these numbers, 20 is to one multiplier, I implemented mm -hmm. that number in the watch thread. So anytime a node is created, that watch controller will create like 20 watch calls. And with that implementation, we created 400 nodes and the cost uh, result of that is the memory of control plane, which was averaging around four gigabytes, jumped to 5.1, 5.2 gigabytes. Okay. Uh, so immediately we saw the API server memory, control plane memory increase. And that's the actual uh, gain we saw from the simulation. So the, the point is that even though this is the means, the end goal is that adding a node actually increases the um, control plane resource utilization. And we saw that in the simulation. So the next step here is we're going to compare it with the actual real node. And if it is in the ballpark with like 30% or uh, with some uh, misses, which we can tolerate for simulation, um, then this is good to go. Then the next step would be generating the same amount of load for VMIs. Okay, gotcha. 
Yeah, I mean, the way I would look at this, I would think it's almost, it might be easier to approach it as like, make up your own unit for this and, and make that as your cost. This costs list watches, this costs this, costs something else, whatever. And then convert this later into memory and CPU because I almost, I think that this cost in memory and CPU is going to vary per data center. Yeah. And number of API servers and, and lots of other things. Like this is going to be hard to actually compute Whereas a list watch is constant. It's going to be across no matter what your infra is. So if you can do it this way, I think that'd be a really powerful way to communicate it. And then and then there can always be some sort of way to translate it based on you know someone's data center hardware and other stuff like that. Actually, you know, I think even the list watch will be uh, varying per data center, right? Because so right now, so let's say we have two cubebird clusters, the density mm -hmm. one and the performance one. And the density one uses a certain um, demon set of uh, uh, no PVC provisioner, CSI provisioner that is not used by the performance cluster. Then because of that little change, even though everything is upstream, and, and open source, mm -hmm. that little change will uh, produce a difference in this list watch cost. Oh, so what I mean is um, um, list watch, the, um, the metric a list watch will be consistent across all Kubernetes clusters, not like the number of them. Oh. Like you can use it, like you can use list watch in all cases when you're in Kubernetes land. Got it. Okay. So you're saying Whereas like CPU and memory, it's not going to be, it's going to vary wildly based on topology and other things. Got it. So you're saying that if we can have a consistent way of measuring list watch, no matter how many deploy, how many components are deployed in, in the cluster, if we have a standardized mechanism to measure the list watch uh, coming per node, then we can uh, say that, okay, if you are a user and if you want to estimate cost, here's the tool to um, measure the list watch per node. And then here's the tool where you plug in the result and simulate that. Yeah, exactly. Like we could, I, you could have your cluster light. I could have mine. I might mm -hmm. get, I'm 18 to one on list watches. You're 20 to one. This tells me something It's like, okay, so something, so I, it tells me that I have, I'm creating less events when I am doing things with nodes, you're creating more. That can, it's totally, there could be, so now it takes out topology because now it's like, oh, wait a second. Like there could be a lot of things that could influence that and that's fine. But it just tells me that I'm, I am, I have less load that I'm putting on when I'm work, when I'm using a node. Got it. Yeah, makes sense. So I think the direction is that we need to find a generic way to measure the list watch per node uh, across uh, different clusters. Yeah, well, the way you're doing it, so that's why it's interesting. That's why I was wondering about this, like filtering out a log sync combine, like if there was a way to pull this out. Um, yeah. Like, yeah. We can measure this, that would be interesting. Yeah. Um, without yeah. having without having an external tool, because like, I mean, I guess you could maybe do it with Prometheus or something, um, but without having a full Kibana setup to, and then having to export a graph for someone else to consume, something we can do from the command line. Yeah, that makes sense. So I think there are two things, right? So if we want to do it with Prometheus, we will need to look at the metrics exported by client go and if we are lucky there will be a metrics that um, can help us well actually that was my problem the reason why i had to go to the audit logs is the client go metrics they give us a, a an aggregation so for example you will be able to know how many list watch requests were made over a period of time and you can find an increase or decrease, but it does not 
get you the granularity of which service account is causing that, which node is making that, and um, which pod within that node is making that. All of that was important for me to find out the exact uh, source of that list watch request. Okay, interesting. Yeah. So we'll, yeah, so either we'll have to extend those metrics or we'll have to find other way to, to like deploy this audit logs in a recreatable way. Without. Well, I wonder if like, I see this is where I wonder, like, so you audit, so the audit log is saying there was a list watch created. This we're saying is sort of a performance and scalability, important performance and scalability data point, right? Mm -hmm. This is where I'm like, okay, well, we're getting in the audit log. So we're, we have a print statement somewhere. I think like all, what you could do is this is one of those places where you can identify, well, this would be nice to have, you could dump this into the Metheus and we can just have a count for this or something. And then now it becomes very, or much more accessible. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. So that audit log is a part of a Kuber, Kubernetes API server. Um, yeah. That is together right so i don't know maybe we can have a sidecar that filters it uh, and we just yeah i mean i can imagine a scenario where let's say you have a sidecar to api server sidecar container that filters uh audit logs that you want right and then you add a node to it for five minutes you let that filter go through collect the results and then um analyze how many list watch requests were made we could do something like that that will be generic across all the um interesting okay well i don't know let's let, let something to think about because um i think like where we can agree is like this like what you have here with this list watch this is important scale and performance data and it's it's and we can communicate it and it's about it and it's and it's useful to talk about we just got to make it a little bit easier to access yeah yep okay cool well that's interesting i i think yeah i've been looking forward to see what some ideas come up with it's cool yeah it's so now progress. where we are at is that this so okay we did an experiment where we added fake notes and added fake vmis there was no change on creation of fake VMIs. All the change was when a node is added. So this tells us that the next thing that we have to look at is load generated on the control plane when a VMI is added by the cubeboard stack and implement simulation for that as well, just like the watcher threads. Okay. Yeah. And hopefully with that, we will see both a bump in resource utilization when a node is added, as well as when a VMI is added. And then we can, that will be like very close to a real life, um, a, a real VMI being started in a cluster. Yeah, that's awesome. Cool, eh? Yeah, I mean, definitely looking forward to seeing what some of the cool other graphs this might, might yield for us and the data points. Yeah. Cool. Okay. All right. That's that's good. All right. All right. Okay. Thanks. Right. Yeah. Thanks, Lay. All right, everyone. I think that's it. We'll end it there. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you.